Now, uh, most of us in here, we know that in, uh, there are three patriarchs, uh, primary, three patriarchs to our faith. First one, first one being Abraham. We know Abraham is the father of our faith because God called him out out of a pagan land uh, to go and worship him. Told Abraham, go, uh, go out, leave. Get out from among your comfort, your friends, your country, your family. Get out from among them and go into a land that I will show you. He didn't rightly know where he was going, but he had to go because God told him to go. But God told him, as you go, I'll show. Some of y'all, you want to know everything before you make a move. Some of y'all, you want to know every, every detail, every, every word. You want to be able to see everything, know everything before you go. But God don't work like that because it wouldn't take faith if God showed you everything before you responded to what God told you to do. So when he speaks to Abraham, he said, get thee out from among your country, your kinfolk, your family, and go to a land that I will show thee. Because before God ever, before God ever reveals anything to you, or, or, the, or the, uh, let me say it this way, before God shows you the totality of what he wants to do in your life, you're going to have to take some steps first. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying here. Some of you need to know everything before you move out on anything. But if you're really walking with God, God's going to give you bits and pieces of the promise. He will never tell you everything because it wouldn't take faith for you if he told you everything. So he just gives you one word, go. And as you go, he'll provide. And as you go, he'll touch the heart of people. And as you go, he'll start lining some things up. Because if God ever tells you to do anything, all the heaven will back you up. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying here in Zion. So the Bible says, Abraham being the father of our faith, God tells him to get thee out. Somebody said, get thee out. Uh, uh, from your country and your kinfolk come on talk to me B because some people that you stay connected to and some people that you stay in intimate relationship with they won't let you go nowhere Lord have mercy here and sometimes you got to get out y'all ain't hearing me from among mindsets and attitudes and dispositions that will try to hinder you from doing what God called you to do and sometimes the only way you can go and do what God told you to do is to get out from among certain people places and things because some folk just don't believe in you I don't care how much God prophesied to you I don't care how many of my God dreams you say you had, they just don't believe in you and if you don't get out from among glory to God pessimistic people they will kill your dreams they will kill your visions they will kill your desire so God says Abraham you can't fulfill my my purpose around these folk you got to leave them I wish I had a church that heard what I was saying hit somebody real quick and say sometimes you got to get out no not just people sometimes you got to get out of you Sometimes you got to get out of your mindset, out of your attitude, out of your disposition, out of your way of thinking. Abraham, get thee out. Get out of here. Get out of here. Because you can't be, do what I called you to do right here. Because some folk remember who you used to be. And they can never see who God's calling you to be. God. I'm preaching to somebody right now. They only know what you did, what you've been through, how you failed. They just know your past. They know your upbringing. They know your pedigree. And they can't see you as a prophet. They can't see you as an evangelist. They can't see you as a pastor. They can't see you as a mighty man or woman of God because they know too much about you. And sometimes you just got to get out. Because some folks aren't spiritual enough to know when God has did something with you. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying here. Hallelujah. Come on, they're still carnal. Hallelujah. They're looking from carnal eyes. They don't know who you are now. Glory to God. But sometimes God, God you got to know God ain't going to let folk kill you because God will make you get out. He'll make you get out. And sometimes you got to get out of you. Glory to God. Sometimes you got to get out of your way of thinking, your attitude, get out of your fear, fears, get out of your doubts. Come on, talk to me. Because you can't fulfill purpose while you're there. Tell somebody, say, I got to get out. I got to get out this year. This is the year I got to get out. This is the year I got to get out. I got to get out this year. Yes, God, I got to get out this year. There's too much on me to stay here. There's too much on my life, too much on my, I got to get out. I got to get out. Hit somebody and say, I got to get out. D 
these folks don't know who I am. I got to get out. Jesus went to his own hometown, preached revival. But in the Bible says he couldn't do many mighty miracles there because they couldn't recognize he was not the little boy they played kickball with no more. He was the Messiah now. I wish I had a church. He had to leave them because he just couldn't do many miracles in his own hometown because, because they couldn't get past their carnality. And Jesus didn't fight with them to try to get them to receive him. He just left there and went to another town and preach the gospel y'all yeah. some of y'all glory to God you've been held up trying to get people to believe in you you've been held up trying to get people to recognize who you are and what God is calling you the devil is a liar you ain't got to believe who I am God says I am what I am hallelujah to God shake somebody's hand real quick and say I got to get out this morning oh I don't know who this word is for but somebody got to get out you got to get somebody shout I'm getting out of stuck Abraham, get on out here. Get on out. He's the first patriarch he, of our faith. God challenges him to go, but he don't really know where he's going. But he has to have faith and trust in God as he's going. For the steps of a good man, they are ordered, ordained by the Lord. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying here. Hallelujah. Uh, Abraham has to trust and believe God. Abraham, the father of our faith, Isaac, who we're going to talk about this morning, he is what we call the prophetic seed or the promise because God made promise to Abraham and said, Abraham, you're going to have a son in your old age. Who me, Lord? I'm 90 years old. Yes, you, Abraham. You're going to have a child in your old age. Can I just pause right there for somebody who the devil's been trying to convince? It's over for you. But God told me to tell you, I'm going to do it for you in your old age. Oh, God. I feel that for somebody right here. Is there anybody in here right now that the devil's been threatening you? Talking about you missed your season. You missed your opportunity. You missed your time. It's too late for you to get married. You're going into your 50s. The devil's a liar. Tell your neighbor, say, God's going to do it in your old age. Oh, he saved the best wine for now. Somebody clap your hands and just give him a praise if you believe God is going to do it in your old age. Tell your neighbor he's going to stop the sun for you. God, I feel like preaching. He's going to stop the sun for somebody in here. He's going to make time stop so you can get what belongs to you. Come on, he's going to make the sun stand still so you can get victory in your life. And even though the devil's in your good ear talking about your past, your childbearing age, and you too old for this to happen, and what you look like trying to go in ministry now, you 55 years old, well, baby, God's going to do it for me. Oh, tell your neighbor, say, he saved the best wine for now. It's something in this mic. I got to get it out. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor. God's going to do it in your old age. He's going to restore the years that the palmer worm, the locust, and the caterpillar has eaten up. I wish I had the church that heard He's going to redeem the time for you. He's going to make the sun stand still on your behalf. God knows how to do it. Hallelujah. Slap somebody a high five and say God's going to do it in your old age. Just when you thought it was over. Just when you thought God forgot about you. Just when you thought God forgot about you to bless somebody else. God said, I'm going to do it in your old age. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it out of season. Some of y'all think God can only bless you in season. But God said, I'm going to bless you out of season. Oh, I know God can bless you out of season. Because when that Syrophoenician girl came to Jesus, talking about I got a daughter home grievously vexed by a demon. Glory to God. Jesus said, I have not been sent to you, but only to the house of Israel. He said, it's not meat for me to give the children bread unto dogs. She said, truth, Lord. But even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And Jesus said, for this saying, you your daughter's made whole. Come on here. He hadn't even came for her yet, but she got a blessing out of season. God, I wish I had a church that heard what I was saying. Hit somebody and say, God's going to do it out of season for you. Yeah, everybody else walked away and say it's over with. Come on. This is what David said, I believe, in Psalms 4. He said, many there be which say of my soul, there's no help for him in God. But thou, God, are my glory and the lifter up of my head. I wish I had about five people that knew I was in the book right about now to give God some glory in this house. Hallelujah. David said, many there be, O Lord, that say of my soul, there's no help for him in God. 
Some folk know your trouble, know your condition, know your circumstance. They don't think there's no help for you. They're going through too bad. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. And when folks see you in a lot of trouble, they don't like to deal with you. But David said, many that be, O Lord, would say of my soul, there's no help for me in God. But then David switched the thing. He said, but thou, O God, are my glory. What man won't do, you, you'll do it. What man won't do, you'll make up the difference. Oh, I wish I had somebody that heard me. Somebody shout and say, God's going to make up the difference for you. What your job didn't supply, what your 401 couldn't supply, come on, God said, I'm going to make up. I'm going to make up the difference. I'm sorry, y'all. Isaac, Isaac is the, is the promise. He's the prophetic seed. He's what God prophesied. He's what God prophesied and said was going to happen in Abraham's life when he was an old man. I, I didn't do this when you were young. I did it when you were old. Because the first shall be last. In the last, come on, I'm talking here, shall be first. Y'all ain't hear me. And better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Somebody ought to shout if you've been waiting for a long time because all God is trying to tell you what you've been waiting for is about to show up. Somebody clap those hands and just give them a praise right about Katama and so. Woo, God, I feel this thing right here. Hallelujah. So the, y'all be seated. So the prophetic seed. Isaac is a prophetic seed. Uh, y'all know Jacob, who Jacob is. Jacob is, 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 is the transformation. Jacob is, trans somebody said Jacob's transformation. Abraham is a patriarch of faith. Isaac, the patriarch of, of a promised seed or prophetic seed. Uh, Jacob is the patriarch of transformation. He speaks to all of us in here because Jacob was the son that had to be changed. From a trickster, from a heel catcher, to one that has favor with God and man. He had to be changed. Because God said, even though you're one of my patriarchs, you won't walk in destiny the way you are. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. Some of y'all trying to bogart your way into destiny. Tell me, I ain't changing, Lord. If you're going to use me, you're going to have to use me like this, Lord. And the Lord said, the devil is a liar. <laughs> Lord, if you're going to use me, I got a hard head. You're going to have to use me like this while I'm mean and ain't the devil's a liar. God said, I'm going to have to have a fight with you, Jacob. I'm going to have to put a limp in you. I'm going to have to bring you to a place of humility. Y'all ain't talking to me up in here. I'm going to have to humble you under the mighty hand. Since you won't humble yourself, I'm going to humble you. Since you won't change, I'm going to bring stuff in your life that's going to change you. God, I wish I had a church up in here. Some of y'all trying to, you blaming too much on the devil. No, you won't humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. You won't change. So God done brought an angel in your life to fight with you. Because he's trying to get your strength out of you. God will never use nobody that ain't got this. <laughs> If you ain't got no limp in your life, the Lord ain't going to use you, baby. He only uses broken vessels. He only uses people, man, that have been broken, that have been humiliated, that have been. If you still walking like this, you, you, you ain't ready for this right here. Tell your neighbor, say, you ain't ready yet. Tell, if you ain't got a little of this in your walk right now, I wish I had the church up in there. I guarantee you, if you get a little of this right here in your walk, your marriage will do better. Your finances will do better. Your minute, if you get a little bit of this. Let somebody say, oh, he give me a limp. Having a limp ain't a bad thing. Having a limp is a sign that you had to fight with God and that God transformed you, that God changed you, that God did a metamorphosis in your life. Ain't nothing wrong with a limp. I was talking to a pastor uh, a few weeks ago, and, and for whatever reason, God brought this to my attention. Uh, he brought this to my attention. I was talking to a pastor, um, uh, oh, it had to be maybe, maybe two months ago now, up in Delaware, and he had this real big, uh, uh, what do you call it? He had this real big um, party because he retired. 
and um, he retired. They had a real big party for him, real big thing for him in the community, all that stuff. He got my age, young guy, but he's been a faithful work all of his life. And so we were in the barbershop up there, and he said to me, he said to me, um, he said to me, man, yeah, I went back to work. I said, he went back to work. And I, when, he, when he said that, I started, started thinking, man, you just had a real big party. <laughs> a retirement party, you went back to work. You went back to work. And I got to thinking about that. And uh, oh, just on yesterday, I got to thinking about that. I said, that took some humility. That took some humility because if you've ever been in full-time ministry, you know how hard it is to go back to a secular job. Y'all ain't talking to me up there. You ain't hearing what I'm saying. But he understood that, wait a minute, I ain't got no, nothing to prove to nobody. And I got a limp in my life. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying here. And, and I can go back to work. I don't care what you say, how you feel, how y'all talking about. Yeah, I had a party, so what? My money's funny right now. I'm going to work. So Ab or Isaac or Jacob, rather, he represents the, the, the patriarch. Somebody said transformation. He's the patriarch of transformation. He's the one that God had to change. He represents all of us in here. Because God is only going to take us so far until he gets change out of us. Uh, sooner or later, you will have an encounter with God that will leave you limping. And if you choose not to have the encounter, you'll never be used of God. If God can't humble you, who is? Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. So Isaac, in our text this morning, Isaac is in a land of famine. God tells him to dwell in that land. And, and I can't say this enough because I believe this is the message that the body of Christ needs conveyed to them. God is not always going to lead you to the mountains. Saints don't, they don't know God. See, the Bible says the children of Israel, they knew, they, they, the children of Israel, they knew the ways of God. Or they knew the acts of God, but Moses knew God's ways. See, you're not going to be able to effectively walk with God just knowing his acts. Because what are you going to do when he don't perform an act for you? What are you going to do when you need the bill paid and he chooses not to pay the bill for whatever reason? I want to know what you're going to do. <laughs> I need to know how you're going to act when things don't work out the way you think they should have worked out and God tells you to go do something and, and, and what he's telling you to do is uncomfortable. God tells uh, Isaac, dwell in the land of famine. This can't be the Lord here. I'm a patriarch. I'm in covenant with God. So why would God lead me to a famine? Come on, the Bible said Je the Spirit led Jesus up into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. So God is not just going to always lead you into pleasant places. I, I preached a few months ago. Y'all remember that? Uh, uh, out of Judges, I mean, some, some of y'all went with me, how God told the people to go up and fight, and then they lost the fight. That'll mess your theology up because, Lord, why are you going to tell me to go up to fight and you know they're going to whoop my butt? <laughs> Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. See, you, 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 can't, you can't try to put God in no box. God has a purpose for everything he allows you to go through. And all you want to do is see the hand of God, and sometimes God is trying to develop his heart in your life. So he, he told them, he said, go ahead up there and fight. They went up there and fought, and they lost. Because God says there's a greater revelation or greater or, or, or greater lesson that I need you to learn in the lost than in winning in this season. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. So you got to understand that God will lead you sometimes in some tough places, some hard places. So he says, I, I, Isaac, I need you to dwell in the land of famine right here. Isaac says, okay, Lord, I can trust you in a famine. I ain't got to know everything. And then the Bible says while Isaac was in the famine, the Bible said Isaac sold in that land. Hallelujah. How many of y'all know how to sow in that land? Y'all, anybody can sow in, in a land you think you're going to get something from. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. Anybody can sow, where, you know, in a land where you know it's productivity and you know you're going to receive something. But how many of you can sow in the land of famine? 
How many of you can have a bad marriage and still do what you're supposed to do? Come on, talk to me up in here. How many of you can be going through in your finances but still give to God what belongs to God? How many of you not a sow in a famine? Who can't sow when it's convenient to sow? Who can't sow when you know there's going to be a benefit from your sowing? Hallelujah. But Isaac sowed in a land of famine. He said, I'm not going to let this famine stop my faith from working. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. Is there anybody here that, that's ever been in a hard place, in a hard season, and, and God, you still felt God challenging you to keep your faith alive in that hard place? God, I wish I had the church up in there. Some of you are in a famine right now, but God, is, he's still putting pressure on you to praise him, to worship, to give, to sow. Come on, boy. Sow in that famine. You can't stop praising me just because you heard it. You can't stop shouting just because you're going through it. You can't stop sowing just because you're in a financial bind. He said, the soul that draws back from my spirit, I will have no pleasure in that soul. Come on here. Isaac is in the famine, but he's not drawing back from God. He's still giving God what God requires. Tell your neighbor, say, you still got to give God what God requires. Yeah, I don't know who I'm preaching to right here, but there's about five of y'all in here this morning. You got to still give God what he requires, even when you're in your own famine. Some folk think because they get in the famine, it gives them a right to change. Some folk think because they're in the famine, it gives them a right not to stand on the word or operate in the word of God. Just because you're in a famine does not give you the leeway or the exit to stop working for the word of God. You, you, you don't get a license to, 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 to be lazy and not productive, producing because you're in the famine. God told the children of Israel in Jeremiah, he said, look, you're going to go into Babylon for 70 years. He said, but while you're down in Babylon, I want you to build houses there, plant vineyards there. Come on here, take wives, have children. We're in Babylon, a place of captivity. While you're in a bad place, keep producing. The children of Israel were slaves in Egypt. When Pharaoh saw them multiplying, when he saw them growing, the Bible says that he took the martyr from them to make straw or brick. He took the straw from them to make brick. And then he told them, but your work better not diminish. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. I'm not going to give you what you need to make the brick, but I still want it. <laughs> I wish I had a church up in here. I wish I had some people in here like that, that the devil done took all that he took from you, but you still produce it. You still making brick. I wish I had a church. I ain't got no straw, but I'm still making brick. Do me a favor, run to one person and tell them you still got to come up with something. I don't care how sad you are. I don't care how broke you are. I don't care how painful of a season you're in. You still got to come up with something. Oh, is there anybody in here that's going to make brick anyhow? I don't have everything I want, but God, I'll give you a praise anyhow. I wish I had a church. That heard what I was saying. Y'all better obey the prophet this morning. Run to somebody and say, neighbor, I still got to give God something. I ain't got everything I want, but I still got to give him something. Yeah, he asked for brick. Uh, the devil don't know. Uh, I'm like baby kids. The more you afflict me, the more I multiply and grow. Baby, we don't die. We multiply. I wish I had a church that heard me. Somebody hit your neighbor and say, neighbor. I multiply in trouble. Oh, in bad circumstances, I get better. In bad circumstances, I get more anointed. In bad circumstances, I... Take away the straw. That's what Pharaoh said. But I still want y'all to give me brick. Your work better not diminish. And there's some people in here know what it is to have less and still produce. 
God, have mercy. Lord, have mercy here. There's a single mother in here right now. Good, good God Almighty. God. You're single, glory to God, but you're still producing for those four babies. Come on here. There's a married couple in here right now. You ain't got all, the, all that you want, but your marriage is still producing. You're still bringing forth fruit. I told them last night in the men's conference, I had folks, man, well, you know, my wife and I, we got married. We had nothing. We stayed broke and busted for a long time. And there was folks getting married with us, our friends. They had high five bedroom houses, Mercedes Benz, BMW, all that kind of stuff. They ain't stay married but a year. We had nothing for 10, 12, 14 years. But we found a way to bring brick and make brick. I wish I had a church. And to multiply. In the worst of conditions, we still brought forth in our marriage. Don't you let nobody, don't believe the lie. Don't believe the statistics. Glory to God. You can't stay married or nothing. The devil is a liar. Oh, you just got to have God and plenty of faith. Y'all done shut me down. Somebody, I ain't trying to hear that apostle. That devil is a lie. He gonna have to bring some money to the table sooner or later here. Oh. He says, so in your family. Can somebody say, so in your family. That's when I know if you got faith or not. I want to know what you do in your family. I know what you do when the cabins are running over. I know what you do when checks are coming in. I know what you do when you get the raise on the job. But that's not what I'm asking some of y'all this morning. I want to know what you're going to do when the famine hits your life. What you're going to do in the famine? Are you going to boycott the church? Are you going to get missing in action? Come on, talk to me here. Hallelujah. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm going to sow in that land. I'm not going to wait until I get out of it. But I'm going to stay right in this barren land. And I'm going to sow right here. Because I understand my faith controls my life. Lord, have mercy. not the economy, not my job. It's my faith that controls my life. The Bible says in Hebrews, through faith, they subdue kingdoms. Through faith, they shut the mouth of lions. Through faith, faith, they quench the violence of fire. It was all through faith. Y'all getting anything out of this? Slap somebody and say, neighbor, uh, you're going to have to work your faith in this season. Some of y'all, some of y'all frustrated because you don't want to work your faith. 